Every artist dreams of having a music career of longevity, whether they admit it or not. Now to do that, you gotta understand what the end of the journey looks like and not just a vision of you getting rich and never having to work a job, because there also is a back end to this thing. The problem is nobody will teach you about exiting, which is why you feel like this can last forever. So if all storytellers can craft an end for their stories, what makes yours an exception? So we gotta dig into all of this on how to plan an exit from the music game coming up right here on the Music Money Makeover Show. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Music Money Makeover Show. Let's hop into this so you don't get lost in the sauce. Check it out. All right, so when we're talking about exiting, we wanna reinvest in our music throughout the process because this is gonna help us own some stuff. So just hear me out. For some of my more recent videos or from some of my more recent videos, you understand why I say reinvest in your music. And that's because out of any standard artist portfolio, music brings the lowest return and is the most cash hungry. So we gotta keep feeding it. So wherever you start to run a profit based on all the revenue you bring in from your music endeavors, pull some off the top and reinvest in your music. Financing your music is not a good move when it's just you or a small team. What I mean by financing is actually getting a loan to do so because it's really, really expensive. So in short, to recap, financing your music should be done with cash, not credit or loan because it has the lowest return. However, we gotta own this stuff and I'll talk about it in a minute on why we need to own it. So invest your profits into other financial avenues. Let's talk about it for a second because we're talking about the exit. We're not in the process, we're getting to the exit. We're preparing for it. Because music is not a regular job, You'll want to sit with the financial planner and begin to figure out a strategy to invest your profits into other financial assets. So whether that be IRAs, 401k, stocks, T-bills, gold and silver, or real estate, or whatever tickles your fancy or whatever you have, whatever, some investments will help you retain money for when you are a little bit wiser to make bigger investments. And some can get you going right out the gate. So it's whatever you choose, but the point is you wanna sit with some type of financial planner and talk about your finances. So when things begin to drop, you've got some cushion and insurance. Now, you wanna retain as much ownership as possible. You'll want to retain as much ownership as possible because as Sir Mix a lot so famously put it, music publishing is your retirement check. So you don't wanna cash in on that early in the game which is why I tell people that you don't really need a music publisher right now, especially when you're getting started in the game. Keep as much ownership of your masters and publishing as possible, as it is totally possible to do this before cashing in too early. Some of you all like to go get that advance check of $500,000, $250,000, or $100,000, maybe a million or 1.5, but you don't realize that three years, four years, five years down the line, if you make it that far, and for some superstars who have to do a few things to last 10 years, long in this game i mean you know come on man like you you're really gonna want to have this as you begin to decline and you're gonna realize that oh i don't have my music my publishing my masters anymore i don't have access to that all i have is the money and the other stuff that i bought what do i do what's gonna happen chances are you're gonna go broke at this point and you're gonna have to find some other investments and hustles to get some things going now, let's talk about the catalog. Catalog the intellectual property. From the beginning, all DIYers or do-it-yourselfers will catalog their records. You all, that's what we do. However, many will not play the copyright game the right way. The copyright game, okay? Either you don't register them for copyright at all, or you register them in your name, not a business risking your protection. Now, you know we talk about this in the 60-day record label, but all intellectual property must be handled with care because it is the seed that bursts all of your golden geese. That's what I was getting to earlier. Music is a, a lost leader. It doesn't make money. It makes money. It'll put money in your pocket, but it doesn't make the money that you want to see in the beginning. What makes the most money is your personality. It's you. It's your story. It's the content, right? And then from there, you can leverage that attention to get the money that you seek. Without the music, we can't really move forward. That is your core talent. And so we need ownership of that because as we exit the game, this is going to be very valuable to us as we have slowed down on making content and we've now moved into the licensing area of things. Now, to sell or to retain, hear me out. Once you've had enough of the game, the question is, do you sell your catalog or retain it? Since you watched through this video this far, many will shoot for retain. 
okay? However, if you decide to sell, make sure you sell for an amount that's going to equate to 10 times or more of the amount that you would have received every year for the rest of your life if possible, but mainly for the next 20 to 30 years, okay? Some may choose to sell a percentage of ownership to get a cash bonus or a percentage in exchange for administration work, which is something I'm gonna suggest. But either way, if you retain or sell, somebody is gonna to have to do the admin work. This is very true. So selling should be thought about further down the line in your career. Now, why did I not say reinvest in merch? Because if you remember from my earlier videos about using business credit, you'll know that credit is great for flipping and music deserves a cash investment that will run at a loss for a long time. Merch is a calculated item that can be sold over and over again, whereas music is not so strong with that because people don't really buy vinyl as much as they will buy merch to wear it out and show that they are a part of the crew that represents this artist. Nobody's gonna walk around with a vinyl record and say, hey, I like this artist, check it out. You know, nobody's doing that but they will buy some merchandise to wear. We don't reinvest in merch. We can reinvest in merch designs all day by just saying, hey, let's just craft a bunch of designs that represent us. They has the logo on it. As we get bigger and bigger, we'll stockpile these designs. We can do that, but we don't really have to reinvest in merch because it'll take care of itself. Now, when should I exit the game? Is a really good question. When the returns of your intellectual property are beginning to drop with each album cycle or each year of single releases, as the revenue begins to drop, is a clear sign of when you should exit the game, okay? Especially if you've already put out three projects. I don't know if you remember our rule of three from way back last year, but if you're past three projects and revenue is starting to decline and it just doesn't keep up anymore, chances are it's time for you to exit the game or plan an exit, you know what I'm saying? Uh, because the fans are dwindling. Now, when should I sell is another good question. Selling should be done at the beginning of your retroactive period of 15 to 20 years after your first release. Let me say it again. Selling should be done at the beginning of your retroactive period of 15 to 20 years after your first release. This is where the next generation begins to pick up on what you were putting down and what made you hot. This will also make buyers give you the price you were looking for when it comes to selling. And the reason why is now you're seeing a resurgence 15 to 20 years down the line of what you did 20 years ago. You get what I'm saying? So now it's like, oh my God, at the 20th anniversary, somebody's thinking about giving you some money or licensing your music and it can be sold for a premium at this point, all right? That's why we wanna shoot for 15 to 20 years down the line. Now, in order to do this the right way, you need the proper foundation because nobody's gonna be selling from person to, it's just not gonna work that way, not from person to person. So this means that if you're an artist, a producer, a new music exec, singer, songwriter, doesn't make a difference. The point is we need a company foundation to build this thing on so we can do business on. And if you wanna do all of this by building your record or publishing company in 60 days or less without searching all over the internet for the how-tos, then I got you covered with the 60 day record label course. I've been doing this for quite a long time. So as I said, the LLC foundation that it's gonna take for us to run this exit strategy is gonna be necessary. And I got you covered with that in this course. And plus you'll learn how to play the game via contract because how else would you know how to sell and for what ways and what rates and reasons without knowing how the contract game works. And then on top of that, you'll be able to collect your international and domestic record and publishing royalties without the middleman taking 15%. How else would you keep your ownership without somebody else getting in the way so you could have a proper exit and a luxurious exit, all right? So I got you covered. I plan for all of this. I know all the stuff you see right down below is included in the course. Please click the link down below this video and get started today. If this is your first time watching the channel, grab my free ebook, 10 Major Steps to Increase Your Record Label's Profit. A free split sheet is included with the download, so don't hesitate, grab it today. But if you successfully exit, you will either sell or retain, but no option is a bad option. And for me personally, if I'm selling, I wanna sell to get the best administration and licensing work possible. Cause I know my family ain't gonna know how to do it. And that's why we sell. We sell because we want some good licensing work done and we want some great administration work done. You get what I'm saying? And it gives us a little cushion to go chill out somewhere. But if you don't have a successful exit, chances are you lost a massive portion of your intellectual property, which makes the time and energy you invested into this part of your life partially fruitful and for some painfully fruitful because you took a huge advance up front that you will never recoup.
Okay. But you, I mean, it might not be. You got to spend it early on in, in the years of making your music, and so you good. When that happens, chances are you're going to be on the road well into your 40s and 50s, which a lot of people do because that's how they're able to stay consistent and get the money. We don't want to do that. And it's going to take a lot of building because this is where you want to exit the game. Selling or retaining. Either way, no option is bad, but you got to sell the right way. Now, if you were wrestling with what the end of this journey would look like for you and how you would actually escape the rat race of the actual industry, now I got a little bit of means to do so so you can retire, if you will, early or later in your career doesn't make a difference. The point is, you know a little bit more about exiting the game. And that's what I wanted to do. Music Money Makers, if you make music, you should always make money. Log on to musicmoneymakeover.com. Jump into the 60 day record label course right down beneath this video. Download the free stuff below. Book a call on musicmoneymakeover.com. And I'll see you next time. Peace.